calling the meeting of May 23rd, Well City Council, to order at 6.30, and uh, we will have a pledge to the flag, so follow me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And Kathy, we can do a roll call, please. Yes. are going to start with public communications and the council welcomes uh, participation in its meetings comments are limited to three minutes per person so that everyone has an opportunity um, and this item is limited to matters that are under the jurisdiction of the city but which are not on the posted agenda public criticism of the council commissions and boards is not prohibited and no action is taken on these items so um, just understand that even though you raise things, we generally aren't able to deal with them unless we decide to agendize it at a later time. So public communications, anyone who would like to speak to us, please come up and you have three minutes and please state your name if you would. My name is Barbara Plaza. You're very well aware of me by now. Um, I would never be here if it wasn't for a big bully in our town. And bullying is a very serious thing. We teach our children about bullying. But when it goes to adults, it gets serious, especially when we had a chief of police at the time that wouldn't even consider it, knowing the parties involved. I've had over 40 bulliers, um, standby bulliers, people who support a bullier without going <coughs> to very long lengths. It's a serious thing now. It came to the point of where my service dog was a license to assist dog for 11 years of my life, has been poisoned on my property by a bully. People in our town are afraid of stepping forward because of bullying in our town by grown-ups. People in our establishment, people at the senior center, people within our own departments of establishment. I have never been bullied in my whole life except for buying a piece of land. Five people prior to me were trying to build on the same land, but were bullied to the point of dis dis distress. You don't know how long a bullying activity lasts on a human soul. I'm making you aware that Bill Schaefer is a dangerous man. He has guns in his house. He's a hot-headed man. And I think you really need to address the bullying in our town by grown-ups. I've been bullied by priests in this town, establishment from this town. I am founding father's grandchild from the Campbell family and I want you to be aware of that. I'm not riding on that. I'm riding on who I am as a human being in my town, wanting to develop just like everybody who wants to live in a home. Thank you very much. Is there any other member of the public who would like to address the City Council at this time. Okay, we're going to move to public matters. Uh, the first item, 3A, is discussion and possible adoption of a resolution for submission of a voter measure on the November 6th ballot to approve cannabis business excise tax. And I think that would be a Jim Lance. Yes. Uh, Mayor, that item is being pulled, okay. and I'll tell you why. I, um, um, yesterday I contacted a, a company, HDL. They are a consulting company that specialize in um, giving cities assistance in, in developing cannabis business ordinances and, and, and uh, helping with the tax structure and putting measures on the ballot. This is precisely what they, they specialize in. So I called them, and I had them take a look at our draft ordinance. And they sent me a sample of their preferred ordinance and suggested that uh, the rate structures that I was proposing really ought to be reconsidered. And so uh, we need to pull this matter, and I intend that it'll be on our next agenda. I'm going to redo the ordinance uh, using their model, and a representative from that company will be here during our city council meeting to give a, an educational talk about this issue, and I think uh, have a... Uh, PowerPoint program that discusses uh, 
taxation and the goals and, and the limitations of it. And we'll have an opportunity to hear from stakeholders and other interested parties. And, um, and the council could uh, adopt the uh, resolution at that time following that presentation. Is that going to be something where we will have a, a cost of, of hiring this consulting uh, firm? The cost is $2,500. Uh, um, I believe we have uh, revenue from our tax <coughs> permitting fees to take care of that. I think it's a reasonable cost. And, uh, and that will be on the same agenda? Yes. Okay. Well, that, it, it's, you will not have to approve that contract oh. because yeah. it's under the $5,000. Oh, okay. Will you still be in the time limit? Yes. Uh, okay. August 1 is our deadline. And so we'll move this to uh, our next meeting would be June 13, I think. Is that right? Second Wednesday yeah, second in Wednesday. June. That sounds right. So, yes, we'll be, we'll be in good shape. Okay. Any other questions? No. Okay. So the second item uh, on public matters is a discussion regarding Measure B of <coughs> the Citizens Oversight Committee. The potential development of a former of the former uh, Howard Memorial Hospital, <coughs> and consideration of proposed uh, resolution that asserts city's rights and obligations relevant to the proposed conversion of the former Howard Hospital uh, by the county to operate an acute psychiatric hospital or a psychiatric health facility. I'm just reading this whole thing, but uh, we all know what this is. Um, and a request for notice of participation in the evaluation and approval of such use. Um, so, I think um, we will open this up for a public uh, hearing and love to hear from people about, about this issue. So, um, you're welcome to come up and introduce yourself. And I think we'll continue to have a three minute limit unless uh, the council have questions of people, then that doesn't come off of your three minutes. So, uh, who would like to address this? And, and uh, Jerry, could you get me a glass of water, please? Hello, my name is Larry Desmond. Uh, concerning this issue, and I do want to learn more about it, because um, I'm open to discussions and hopefully we take our time uh, mulling this over. Um, my, my concern for our town is there's a lot of things going on with the, obviously uh, the uh, businesses in town suggesting to the, uh, the bypass, the construction in town, and the economy is kind of in the tank right now for a lot of businesses. And I don't, I, I want to see how this proposed um, institution would help? How would it help? How would it move uh, us forward in any financial way? I, I don't see it as a way as, as far as tourism, certainly. But uh, I, I do need, we need something that's promoting the town. I don't know if this is promoting. Um, it does have to go somewhere. I understand the need. We do have a house, uh, not a house, but a building vacant. It's available. Uh, that's all good. I just, I'm just searching for uh, why here. And I know you kind of didn't do it because they have a school nearby. We have two schools nearby. So I just, I want to have more discussions. I think that's <coughs> it for now, but thank you. Barbara. When the hospital was still um, being used for the hospital, the reason why it was uh, moved to where it is today was because it was not retrofitted for earthquake. Why would you house people there <coughs> if that was the case for the hospital? Wouldn't that still be the same problem because it's not earthquake proof? Thank you. So I'm hoping we're going to hear some reports on um, the committee that met today earlier. Or, uh, or should we? I'm going to jump in if there's someone else. Um, so we had asked at a former council meeting um, that uh, we have a re uh, there's a district three representative, Jed Diamond, and uh, he kindly said that after every meeting. Um, of the Measure B subcommittee, he would come and, and talk to us about what happened and sort of give, uh, let us know what happened at the meeting. Um, I was also uh, had a really very nice meeting with our supervisor, uh, Georgian uh, Krosky, who is here today, and she said she would love to come to our council member uh, council meeting and, and talk about the um, the proposal and answer questions. Um, she had actually said before that. Uh, Dr. Diamond wouldn't be available today, but he's here today, which is great. Um, so I see both of them in the audience, and they're available. Um, we had also, the council had also requested that I ask um, uh, Dr. 
Ace Barash, and I'm sorry if, I, here. if I didn't pronounce your name right, <laughs> and, um, and also Sheriff Almond, and he uh, called me and said that he could not make it. He had a prior engagement, so he could not come. Um, so we have these speakers. Uh, we were also asked to prepare the, uh, our city attorney, Jim Lance, was also asked to prepare a resolution talking about um, what the various constraints of the, uh, the, the legalities of constructing such a, a facility uh, here. And so I'm not sure whether you'd like to hear from our guests uh, first or whether you'd like to, um, whether the city attorney can talk about his resolution. Um, what do you recommend? <laughs> um, I, I think you should hear from your, your guests and, 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 uh, and then have a public hearing. And if it gets to the point that you want to consider a resolution, we can talk about the one that was prepared and whether you want to adopt it or make changes to it. <clears throat> okay. So, um, Amongst uh, <laughs> the various representatives who have been attending the Measure B committee, if, if uh, some of you would like to explain what's going on in the process, we would appreciate that. Jed, do you want to yeah, start? I think Georgina. Oh, Georgina, okay. okay. First, and then I'll speak, and Thanks. Ace can speak, and whoever else <clears throat> okay. from our, our group. Yeah. Here. Good evening, Georgina Krosky, uh, Supervisor for the Third District. Thank you very much for having me here. Um, so, you know, mainly I came for a, a couple of reasons. One, to support Jed Diamond, my appointee to the 3rd District. And I just want to stress to the council that what I think is really important as a council and as a city is that you are at these meetings. So, you know, I, I think it's, it's great if Jed is, you know, willing and able, but he also is representing more than just Willits. I mean, he is not a Willits representative. He's looking at the overall county's interests and, you know, representing all of the 3rd District. So. You know, one of the reasons he was not going to be here originally tonight is the LAMAC only meets once a month. So this was their meeting for this month. And, and I'd asked him to come and do an update for them at this meeting. So, you know, he won't be here after every single council meeting because some of those will fall, or after committee meeting, some of those will fall when he needs to go to, you know, Covalo or Laytonville. Um, but I, you know, I just want to stress, if you have individual <coughs> opinions and, and things like that that you want to discuss with Jed Diamond, I think that's great. But as an overall city, I think it's really important that you have a presence at the meetings and, and have your opinions stated there at the meetings. So that's, um, and, and I'm certainly always available. I mean, any concerns, certainly anyone in Willits is welcome to call me or email me. And, and certainly anyone from the council or city manager is welcome to call me as well. Um, and the only other thing that I'd like to stress, because from the comments that I'd had made to me prior, I think there is a little confusion over the role of the committee. And, you know, the committee is not making any decisions. The committee is an advisory committee that will be bringing recommendations to the board, and the board does control all of the money for Measure B. And so the board will be making all of those monetary decisions. Um, for example, the Kemper needs assessment, that is something that the board has to say, yes, the voters' money can go towards that. So I, you know, I think that um, there's an impression that things are moving faster than they really are. So um, we'll certainly have them come up and talk about what Measure B has been discussing in their committee meetings. But um, you know, I, I think I just want to make sure that everyone understands that at the board level, there certainly is no um, push to try to make Howard the location. I, I mean, we're we're simply waiting on our needs assessment and waiting on a recommendation from the committee. And they are looking at Howard at this point. Um, and I, I don't think that's simply because, and again, I'll let them, them talk more, but I, I think that's not simply because that's what they want, but because it's been looked at before. So there is some data from before. So while they're waiting on some of the needs assessment results, they can at least be productive with going back and looking at what's already been done with Howard. So I just, I, you know, I, I'd like to calm some of the fears that things are moving along so quickly because they, they really aren't. I mean, yes, we want this to happen, but um, it, it is government and it is going to take a while. So, um, you know, we really are trying to do a good needs assessment, figure out what exactly what type of facility is going to be best for the county, and then we'll make sure that, um, you know, we, we really do have a lot of public outreach on where it's going to be and what the plan for where it's going to be. Um, but again, I just want to stress that I think it's important that, you know, whether the city wants to make an ad hoc for it or however you want to handle it, but to make sure that you have someone there at those committee meetings to have some input at those meetings. And that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, George. Well, thank you. 
Thank you uh, for inviting us. I'm Jed Diamond. I think most of you know me. I've spoken at city council <coughs> meetings numerous times, but not in this capacity. So I just say a couple of things about me in this capacity. Uh, some of you know that I've worked in the field of mental health for more than 40 years. That's kind of what I do professionally. And when the Measure B was passed, it specified that there would be a, an 11 person community uh, board that, as Georgian describes, would be able to make recommendations to the Board of Supervisors. And I thought this was a potential area that I could serve the community in. And so I, the, the way the 11 people board is constituted, each of the supervisors of each of the five districts nominated a person and George Ann nominated me from the third district and each of the other supervisors did the same and then there's six county officials, the sheriff and mental health director and so on. So in that capacity, I'm one of 11 people that, you know, hears, listens, and shares, you know, what, what we know as things are moving along. Um, I just want to let you all know and just reiterate what George Ann says is that the, the meetings happen once a month. They're all scheduled. They're from uh, 1 to 3 uh, on Wednesdays. The, this one just happened today, so I've just had a long day coming from that. <laughs> being here tonight, and I'm, I'm happy to do that because these they really are important issues, and I, I think you all are aware that Measure B, uh, you know, passed with, a, I think, 84 percent majority, so it was something that uh, the electorate really, really wanted, but now you get down to the, the details and the specifics, and there's a lot of questions beyond the, the general, you know, idea that we want mental health services, and there's a need for some kind of emergency and residential service. So where things are as of today in, in terms of how things are moving along, at least from my perspective, uh, being one of the members, is uh, we are recommending to the Board of Supervisors that this needs assessment be done by the Kemper Group. Uh, and they've given a, a number of uh, presentations about their credentials. And I think many of you know they've already done a general mental health study in the past. Uh, we're thinking this would be good to have a more detailed look. And so we've put questions to them. Um, at the last meeting, which I'm, I'm just holding here, these are the, the minutes from the last meeting in April. Uh, they haven't been finally approved, but when they are, they'll be available to everybody. Uh, within these minutes uh, were questions that a number of the uh, members of the committee put to the Kemper group. We said, here's some things that we would like answered, and I, I was one of a number of the members that wrote out specific questions. So if anybody's interested, once you get the minutes, all my questions as an individual member are asked. So those are some of mine, and there's other members that have asked, and we're certainly open to other. I know part of the Kemper group is interviewing community members, so there'll be plenty of time for community input. And, and I, as I see it, there's a number of steps. There'll be a needs assessment to see where, what are the mental health needs that aren't being met around the issues that Measure B is addressing. Uh, then they will be looking at what's needed. And then a second question is, where would the needs be best served in terms of geographic location? If there was a some kind of a residential program, would there be one of them in some area of the county? Would you have more than one in different areas? So those would be, you know, decided or discussed. And then finally, looking at any specific programs in any specific places. And I think, as George Ann said, the, the old hospital has been talked about way before Measure B was talked about. So that's why it had, you know, come up when Measure B and this group met that, okay, there's some things that have already been discussed, but we're at least three or four steps away from looking at any facilities. So I think I just wanted to let you know that and just reiterate what George Ann said, that I'm individually available, and I, I said uh, 
Uh, Stephanie, I'm happy to meet with you all anytime that you'd like me to, that I can come, that I'm not somewhere else. And, you know, I live in town, so I'm, I see many people just on the streets and so on. So that's, uh, I think, what I would offer for tonight and certainly available for uh, any of you to in individual questions. And as soon as the minutes get approved, you will see in the minutes some of the questions I'm asking of the, the Kemper group that I would like to know as part of that and some of the other members. So I, I'd like to just pass it over to Ace Barish, who was also on the agenda to, uh, from our group, if there's anything. Oh, any question? question? Yeah, I'd sure. like to ask you a question. These types of facilities, are they generally located near a hospital? So are you focused on communities that have an existing hospital? You mean in our, in our, in the, in, in the county ourselves for this, or for this for this project this type of facility this type of facility for example would you be looking at cities that didn't have a hospital in it or are you looking at only cities within our county that have a hospital well first of all we we're not even at a place where we know what what kind of a facility at all that okay. is going to meet the need that the the Kemper group will identify of unmet needs. So once we know that, then we can, the next step would be looking at where facilities like that have been located. They've, they, they work all over the, the state, so they'll be providing input to questions like those of where in other communities where they have facilities like we would identify, which we don't know yet because we don't have the needs assessment done, that's a need, then we'd see, well, where, what type of places do we need? Where would they be located? Uh, what kind of facilities? And where would be the appropriate place or places in our, in our community where you would want and benefit from some kind of a facility that there, would meet those needs? The reason that I'm asking is because I'm wondering if it, if it doesn't have to be in close proximity to a hospital, and the, the county's quite large, uh, how, is the will the committee be considering places like, for example, Laytonville or Anderson Valley or other communities? Sure. Uh, do you have a list already of of sites that you've discussed? Um, you've discussed Howard Hospital. I've heard discussion that that I've heard the word that you've discussed a potential site at least one in Ukiah. Has there been discussion about? any other sites in any other communities so far? No, I think the only reason that, as I said, Howard Hospital had come up and was discussed at all was because that had already been done as far as that this would be something that would happen after the Kemper, one, it hasn't been approved yet by the Board of Supervisors, just to underline what Georgiana, I understand there was a, a, a $10,000 allotment that continued the work that he had already started, but that uh, another uh, proposal will be coming to the Board of Supervisors to continue that work. So until that's done, we won't know okay. what the need is, but we're certainly you know, open to, I think, at least me as an individual committee member, to looking at where anywhere in our county that might be appropriate for whatever it is that our county needs. So it sounds like you've got a long way still to go. We, and then lastly, I, I know how much work can go into a committee, and I know this committee is going to take a lot of work. So I just want to thank you for your volunteer time on the committee. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Jerry, another question? Yeah, and Jed, I, I get that the Kemp, Kemper? Kemper is Kemper, the name. Kemper, um, is looking at it. We'll come back with probably a more uh, formal study of, of where it might be appropriate, et cetera. But I have heard in the community, and I would be I guess I have not read the minutes, so I don't know if it, was there a discussion that occurred at your meeting or the Board of Soups where the idea that a facility located near a school was not appropriate? Did that actually occur, or is that just something that's kind of taken? I had heard that, but it did, that didn't come up at the, any of the meetings that the Measure B group. I had heard that somebody said that, but I don't know any detail about that. That was not a a question as far as I remember of anything that came up in the Measure B meetings. We've, you know, our first meeting was in January, so we've had January, February, March, April, we've had four meetings and then May, to the meeting today, so five meetings. As far as I know, that 
that wasn't not in any meetings that we 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 I attended at the measure B group okay I just it, it had come up and it had kind of been I heard rally, that as well but I, I don't know anything about that, that and I just wanted to, if that did happen I was curious yeah. about getting more information about I, I don't know and just wanted to clarify I think what I heard in the answer to Sabrina's question is you haven't really started a like identifying all the potential sites that some facility that eventually gets identified is the right. kind of facility you haven't done that we have not done that okay. that's yeah. that's what why we're okay. recommending that this experienced camper group look at the unmet needs and First. see where the, the gaps are between okay. what we have and what we need and then we'd start looking at where yeah. and what type of facility would be needed and then be looking at all options anywhere that you know there might be possibilities thank you okay so um, dr. Barish do you want to add <coughs> that? and then we do have some other public members who are certainly welcome to to have their comments as well so I'm Ace Barish I'm an internist uh, worked at Howard Hospital over 35 years and um, uh, I worked in the emergency room for uh, probably half that time and I've been working on the ward for the last half uh, and I serve as a uh, an administrative doctor we call a medical officer at Howard um, for getting things other than medical care done um, I, I got propelled into mental health care partly just as doctors we <coughs> empathize with our patients and uh, people who are having a difficult time in one way or another try to help them solve their problems and uh, became aware of how um, particularly difficult in Mendocino County that is just because of the lack of services that we've had. <coughs> and we've looked into many different aspects of those services. Um, I've been involved with uh, Camille Schrader uh, for some time. I've known her for a long time. Uh, we, we did a feasibility study for uh, the old Howard years ago, this was not Camille before her time, but um, Camille and I began several years ago um, negotiating with Adventist Health uh, to possibly be a part of this project, you know, being that they're the, the uh, health provider uh, locally and in Ukiah, and um, <coughs> part of this uh, falls into their purview. Um, to that end, we were talking to Tricia Williams, who was the CEO at um, Vallejo Behavioral Health, which is the one hospital in what they call the Northern California Network that uh, is a uh, psychiatric hospital. Um, we had a number of negotiations with her, and as a part of that, Adventist Health sent a team to um, uh, evaluate Howard Hospital as a possible site. And part of the reason for that evaluation there, it it, it um, requires a certain level of durability to have a psychiatric hospital. They have the state, and I don't pretend to understand these, but the state has five levels of earthquake preparedness, and, and someone made a mention of the fact that uh, this is not, uh, that the new hospital was built partly because the old hospital would have had to be re retrofitted to, be, to continue to be a, an acute hospital. Um, what we learned is that the newest construction at Howard Hospital is level four. So that's pretty close, but not quite good enough for an acute hospital. But for whatever reason, whatever wisdom, uh, level four is good enough for a psychiatric hospital. Mm -hmm. So that was part of the reason for, for looking at Howard Hospital. I mean, there was a lot of preliminary. I mean, the first obvious uh, reason was that it was vacant, as somebody said. Um, and, uh, and it's a... Uh, And in, uh, a site that's dear to our hearts, or some of us. But um, uh, you know, and, well. Um, so we we began looking at it, and it seemed like it was a site that would be acceptable as a as a, a site to refurbish and actually use in that capacity. Um, as far as psychiatric hospitals. Um, and I, I recognize that their floor plan included more than just a psychiatric hospital, but I think that's, a, that's another issue, and I think it's certainly worth considering. I, I'm not discounting it. I'm just saying that 
you know, in considering a psychiatric hospital, uh, part of that came from the difficulties that are encountered when you have the 5150 patient, meaning somebody who is a danger to themselves or others are greatly disabled, and finding a place where they can receive therapy and in a secure uh, environment. And uh, in my time in the emergency room, I saw that as a nightmare. You know, people just, they were already in, in in distress to be kept there for days, sometimes at least hours, looking for a facility, some place for them to go, and then transferring them to another county um, where they were, um, where we were told they were, the information was not passed from the other county. They wouldn't even accept the information from us, citing um, uh, HIPAA violations, which wasn't quite true. But, um, it was just it was very suboptimal. And then the, the family often couldn't go. And uh, there was a very strong feeling that we needed our own lock facility here in, in situations like that. Um, so that was another reason for considering sites, this as a possible site for a, uh, um, a psychiatric hospital. I think um, uh, to build a facility from the ground, um, of that durability would be very expensive, um, much less so. Uh, Ms. Clark brought a, a, a salient point that this, this is a larger facility than is needed for a psych psychiatric hospital. The floor plan uh, was drawn to uh, include other, other potential uses in the uh, psychiatric realm that were not locked facilities. Um, but, you know, I mean, I think this is certainly, I think that. First of all, I wasn't really aware of the extent of the negative feeling toward this uh, in Willits. I, th I think, if, if I'm not mistaken, I could have been mistaken because I wasn't um, as aware of perhaps as I, well, I mean, we weren't really planning anything as yet. But I think was, was the prior uh, city manager part of the Howard Foundation? Yes. Yeah. So, I, you know, I mean, I, I was aware of that at some level, but I, and so I, I, I thought that people in Willits were better informed than they seemed to be, I mean, I, and I was surprised at all the negative, negative feeling about it. Um, but I, you know, so I think all of this is very worthwhile to inspect carefully and discuss and to, the, to the extent that people want to do that and want to be informed and, and give their um, uh, feeling about it actually having a facility like that, because as I said in the paper, I, I didn't want to see anybody excluded, particularly the neighbors. Thank you. Um, Are there any questions for you? Yes. Okay. I was at the meeting. Did you, did you finish what you did? Yes. Yeah, okay, sorry. Go ahead there. I was at the meeting today, and uh, um, I thought it was interesting. It was the first one I've ever been at. Um, my thing is that, um, these meetings started in January, and I don't know how many people on the council were aware of this before a month ago or three weeks ago or whatever, but I certainly was not. And uh, I would have just thought that, that uh, we would have been, you know, or at least somebody would have mentioned it to the city that, you know, this, it, this is part of Willits, do you want to come to the meetings or whatever? Um, and obviously, uh, my understanding is that nobody on the council was ever invited or, or thought to come. And Jed, you know, wrote out a, a thing on, on his computer saying that, you know, that he wanted to be a member. And uh, uh, I don't know how many other people in the city of Willits had that opportunity. Um, but that's not here or there. That's, you know, the thing about it is, I talked to a lady today that was on the, it's on the mental health, and there was a mental health meeting in Willits either last week or this week on Wednesday, and nobody, did anybody in the city know about it? I didn't know about it. She said that the, she brought the information and the posters and everything to the city of Willits on Friday, and the city of Willits was closed, so she couldn't give it to the city of Willits. Um, 
you know, if there's just a bundle of things that have happened that, you know, that are just wrong. I'll just put it that way. That's probably the easiest way to do it. And I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just saying that as as a, a, a person that is on the council, I mean, to know about this, you know, four months down the road is, is, uh, is you know, I, I just don't know how that could have happened. Um, but there, was, there wasn't anything today said about a site other than at the end, the comments that were made and by a, a young man named Ross mentioned that this would be an ideal location because of the money that needs to be spent if you have to build a brand new one. And he talked about that a little bit and then uh, it went on to the next person. But that was the only thing that I heard today I uh, had anything to do with Willits or the, or the Howard Hospital or the old Howard Hospital at all. Um, <clears throat> um, but I just thought it, you know, the lady brought up a really nice thing and uh, that was here f for a while and she said about the seismic. Well, I asked the lady for mental health and she said that there's different stratas or standards or whatever for mental health and it's not okay for a hospital hospital, but it's okay for a mental hospital. It meets the code for that. Is that correct? That's what I was just saying. Yeah, the, the different earthquake levels. Yeah, and and uh, I was just surprised about that. Nobody had ever ever said that to us or said it to me. I'll, maybe the rest of them they did. Um, uh, a lot of things happen. Once again, a lot of things happen on the internet that I never see because I'm too old and too dumb to do it <laughs> on the internet. But anyhow, um, I just think that there's things that, that the mental health people and all of the people that are involved in this could have, had, could have said, you know, hey, you know, we've had five meetings and you guys have never come to it. Uh, is there a reason? Or did anybody ever think about that? There, I, I think we, we're going to have another opportunity after we've heard Well, I'm asking the questions, and, and, okay. and I'm not through yet. Okay. Okay. Anyhow. Can I answer the questions yes. you posed so far? Um, I, just a couple of things. So, you know, these are all publicly noticed meetings. So all of the meetings, including the behavior health meeting that was at the, um, the WISC Center here in Willits on Wednesday, which I was at, um, so those all go out as a, as a public notification. It goes to a, a huge list. I can show you the list. But, you know, we cannot force the papers to print when those meetings are. We can't force the radio, you know, stations to announce it. I did recommend at this last meeting that they also give the flyers to the public TV station here. Um, they try to post flyers for these meetings as well. Yeah, I know I mean, that's what you The Behavioral Health Advisory Board, are, they're very poorly attended, as are most meetings. I mean, they're during the day. There's a lot of people that can't come. But they, you know, there is a fair amount. If you want to be put on the list for these meetings, for when the agendas go out, you simply need to ask, and we can put you on the mailing list to to get the agendas for the behavior health meetings or for the the Measure B committee meetings. Um, but I, I think there there is at some point. I mean, I don't I don't get mailings of what's coming to your meetings. I mean, nobody reaches out to me either. So I, I think there has to be some. You go ahead and see what's on the agenda and read it. I mean, these have been discussed regularly at the supervisor meetings. That these committee meetings are happening with reports back to the the board of supervisors. So, um, you know, I, I think probably both of us need to be in communication better with each other. I do try to check your agendas. I do try to come when I can. It's it's been a little more difficult with. Um, me having the kids at home by myself at night, but I try to come to these meetings when I can. Um, but I, I just think that they are publicly noticed. We do our, our best to get these out to all the media for both Measure B and for the behavioral health board. Is there a place that it's posted in the, in the community someplace that somebody could look at it? If you want it posted a certain location, we certainly can. So, you know, the recommendation I made at the last behavior health board was that we only post them in the town that we're actually going to have the meeting at. Okay. Because it's hard to post. I mean, it, the chances of us posting something in Albion and 
for the meetings in Willits, we're probably not going to get a lot of, of stuff. You know, the behavior health meetings, they bounce around the county throughout the year. So we rotate around. We've had two in Willits so far this year. But they do jump around between locations to try to get involvement in the different areas. Um, but I can certainly ask that they, the uh, behavior health does add the city of Willits to those notifications. And I, I think we could do the same with the, the sheriff's office is actually the clerk for Measure B, but I think that we could ask the same um, for the Measure B meetings. And, and any other meetings that you're interested in. Larry, were you finished with your comments yet? Were you finished? Yes. Okay, Jerry. I just wanted to, to, to explain that after going to the Measure B meeting, uh, Dora Briley has been sending me, I think when I signed in, I put my email. So I'm on that so you're one list that on the, for the Measure B one. Were you put on that one? Or I actually haven't gotten them. So yeah, it seems like right after I attended that meeting, I've been getting them. So okay. yeah. yeah, so certainly, I mean, I think we can certainly add you to those. So you are getting notifications. And again, with Behavior Health, if you want to put on those or, you know, just whichever other meetings that you want noticed on. I want to make sure we hear from other people uh, on the public, um, from the public. And I also just wanted to mention that if, if we end up um, wanting to have a, a Willis representative attending regularly, I'd like to appoint somebody as a sort of a ad hoc or whatever we want to call it, so that we don't each attend one meeting and then not, and then somebody else, or have three of us and, and have a Brown Act problem. So, uh, so let's consider that after we've heard from the public. Any other questions for Dr. Barry? Can I just jump in? I, I was interested in the, uh, the, the hospital construction standards and uh, at what detail or level you looked at that. Um, because I spoke to the Office of State Hospital Construction and they assured me that they would have to be absolutely a part of the process and approving everything that went through. And when I said that there was some lower standard, he said absolutely not. So I'm thinking, so I'm sort of getting some conflicting information. It's just sort of interesting. Um, he said that the only way that they would not be involved is if it were to be only a clinic. But I, but I said it would be a hospital with beds, and they said absolutely they would need to be involved. Um, also, there was some talk about whether the state fire marshal had been involved, and there's some conflicting information about that. We do have our, our fire chief here, and, and he had um, maybe some things to say about that that might be of interest. I don't know if anybody would want to hear him. Okay, so thank you, Dr. Barish. Any, uh, some other folks would like to address the city council? Come on up. Good evening, I'm Derek Kamaroff. I'm not an expert on mental health, but I'm, I'm pretty good at paying attention to what I see and hear. And um, uh, Ms. Krosky was saying that the impression that things are moving faster than they are is true at the moment. Uh, however, I, wa I, wa I watched the March meeting of the Measure B Committee. I watched it twice, all the way through. And things were quite a bit different at the March meeting. Um, they spent a great deal of that meeting discussing Howard Hospital in great detail. They talked about all kinds of issues involving using it for it. They talked about ways of avoiding certain, certain permitting processes. They talked, uh, they invited people to go on tours of Howard Hospital. So. Uh, Mr. Diamond said we're three or four steps away from looking at any facility. That may be the case finally now, but in March it was a completely different story. They were really pushing, discussing at length, and I'm sorry, I have to disagree with you. There was a woman sitting at, at part, of the count, part of the committee. I don't know who she was. She was sitting right next to Carmel Angelo, the uh, CEO. And she is the one who said that they considered a facility on Orchard Avenue in Ukiah, but rejected it because it was next to a school. I listened to it. I wrote it down. I wrote her exact words down. That is what she said. This is a little, and all I can say is I invite you to look, watch the video. It, it's right there in black and white and color, whatever. It's there. And, um, uh, I knew nothing about this till I watched what the committee was up to. Um, 
The other thing is Mr. Kemper of the Kemper Group, who is apparently an expert on mental health. Uh, a statement he made at that meeting, if I understood him correctly, when they asked him a, about Howard Hospital, about using that facility, and about staffing it, he says, he said, that's not part of our skills set, he called it. He says, we're, you know, my job is going to be tell you what, what needs are for mental health in this county, and it's up to you to figure out what you need for a facility. So I don't know that Mr. Kemper is going to change his mind. But I do want you to know that uh, I believe very strongly that if the city of Wilts had not spoken up, if the city manager and, and the police chief and Mr. Gonzalez and everybody didn't show up, and if the handful of people here who got alerted by the newspaper and then watched uh, the video didn't show up, I think they'd be starting to, you know, paint the walls there. I think they would slip it right through. I'm not saying it shouldn't be. I personally don't think it should be there, but that's not the point. The point is that they were moving very quickly until somebody said, wait a minute. And all of a sudden they're saying, oh, we're not talking about this. The city, uh, Carmel Angelo said, you're on square Z, we're only on square A. But again, I invite you to look at that March meeting and you'll Your find it's exactly yeah. opposite. Thank you. Can I ask a question, Mr. Cameron? Yeah. The, uh, the March meeting that you're referring to, did you look at the agenda summary and did the, excuse me, the agenda title? Did the agenda title say anything about the Howard Hospital site so that someone who got that would know that was being discussed? No, I didn't. I, the reason I did is because I read about this fence in the Willis News and I, it jolted me and so I went to look at the meeting to find out, you know, what the Willis News was talking about, and that's when I discovered all this. Ever since then, um, I'm sorry, I guess I'm run over. Yeah. At the end of the March meeting, uh, Sheriff Allman appeared to say, we're going to vote on this next meeting. That's what I heard him say. Um, and next meeting, it wasn't on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. So other members of the public would like to speak to us on this issue? Anybody there? Don't don't be shy because we'll close the hearing in a moment. <laughs> oh. Yes, would you like? Um, I have the copy of the The March. Okay. Yeah, I'm just curious what the titles. If the title said anything about the Howard site. That was the March meeting. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Did you want to speak to the council or not? No? Okay. Um, Chief Will? Will. Madam Mayor, council members, uh, we're in support of mental health. We do know that we need that within our county for sure. Um, but we're also the authority uh, over, the, over the fire code out of the California Building Code, the Little Lake Fire Protection District is. Usually in any industry, uh, when something's being done or moved or changed or an occupancy is being changed, uh, that comes through uh, the local fire district who is the authority having jurisdiction of that book. Um, we haven't been contacted uh, recently in this project uh, in any way. Um, certainly being an institution, it would be something that we would uh, secure the, the, the assistance of the state fire marshal's office. Um, we have a fairly new state fire marshal that, that works in our area. His name's Shane. Um, he's from up north. And uh, I talked to him, and he was unaware of this project. Now, I will say that in the past, back when the uh, slides happened at the Confusion Hill area, we did have a meeting scheduled at the Howard uh, site in order to have the state fire marshal at the time, Ken Wallenweider, come and visit. He physically couldn't make it down for that project. But we've moved forward with talking about this facility, and we have not been included. We haven't been contacted. Uh, we, I, I have concerns over the facility. Even though I know we have this strong need for mental health, we have building standards that we need to look out for. And I have, I have concerns over um, our inclusion due to impact, quite honestly. This community is, is, uh, has the, is volunteer firefighters. We respond to 650 calls a year with volunteer service, approximately 1.7 to 1.8 calls a day. Keep in mind that our previous staff have made it to where we don't respond to all medical aids. 
for the simple fact that we don't burn out our volunteer firefighters in our community. Now, uh, I put out the question, what happens when those calls go up? What if there's another, it, it's all what if, but what if the call volume goes up 100, 150 calls, 200 calls? I don't know. I, maybe none. I'm not sure. But there's one entity in all of this where people are not getting paid, and that's the volunteer fire department that provides for EMS in this area. The sheriff's department gets paid. Even though it's an impact on Willis PD, they get paid. The people that work at the facility get paid. But the impact on the volunteer fire service that we do provide EMS for, they get zero dollars. They lose money. They leave their jobs during the day to go on these calls, even the mental health calls. And they are unrecognized in this process. So my question to everybody, for or against it, how are we going to take care of the impact to the local uh, to the local entities, the fire department? In my case, I, I can only speak for our agency. Now we have a dilapidated firehouse, which I'm going to talk a lot about later tonight. We can't provide we don't we provide for 24-hour service, but we do it from our homes. So if call volumes go up in our community, if it's due to men, mental health facility, if, if the mental health facility impacts that. How are we going to how are we going to receive help for that? We haven't been contacted by anybody. I didn't go to Ukiah to look for a public notice, but I would think that any agency or entity that's going to be impacted by a facility going into a community that we would be incorporated. Okay, city staff, uh, Mr. Sherman, when there's a new cannabis facility goes in, I'm one of the first phone calls they make. And the reason for that is because we're going to be impacted by that facility. So I'd like to think that the local agencies that are going to be impacted by anything that will come into our jurisdiction would be notified and be on a list uh, in order to, to figure out how we're going to mitigate those, those impacts. <clears throat> anyway, that's, that's all I have to say about it. Thank you very much. Madam Mayor, uh, I, so I've been given a copy of, these, uh, of the agenda for that March meeting. And it was properly uh, noticed. There's uh, item D says that the committee will um, discuss a report uh, on all the preparation work that has been done to date on the old Howard Hospital site in Willits to be considered for a crisis psychiatric facility, including explanation of different types of facilities and staffing required. So that was a that was a noticed uh, agendized topic of discussion, but apparently we didn't get the, <laughs> the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Georgian. Thank you. Um, Georgian Krosky, I just want to make a couple statements as, as far as what we just heard. And, um, and I, I think it is very valid, and I think we should definitely be reaching out. If there were a project, that should be the phone call. But I can say that as a supervisor, I would be very concerned if you'd received a phone call. Because this has not gone forward. And if, if I found out that this committee is already reaching out and discussing this proposal that this is a project that's going forward before it has come before me for any type of approval, then I would be very concerned. So actually, it relieves me that you have not received a phone call to, you know, to look into this because we're, we are, we're farther behind than that. So you know, I think, yes, we do need to, at some point, have some of those discussions. And I think that you know, some of the, the reaching out that was done was under that heading that was listed you know, the work that's already been done. I, I believe that's what was asked for in the meeting. I, I wasn't at the meetings, but I did read the minutes. And I think what they looked at was what has already been done. So I, I think Measure B doesn't want to just sit on their hands and do nothing. They, they do want to be productive with their time while they move forward with this needs assessment. Um, so while they can't go out and, and suddenly start evaluating a lot of new places, they can look at the work that was already done. And the work was done before I was on the, the Board of Supervisors. There was some work already done looking at Howard Hospital, as we talked about. So uh, I, I would like to actually, our, our building official is here, and he might have some information that would be interesting to you. Uh, Mr. Sherman? Uh, it might be useful, because uh, you may be surprised at some of the information that's come up. <laughs> Yes, I, I, Supervisor Kroski, I think it's time for you to be very concerned then. <laughs> How I learned about this project is I received a phone call from an architect <clears throat> uh, 
asking me about submittal requirements and timetables for issuing permits for putting lockdown doors on the walk-in clinic. Now, that was the first I heard about the facility being considered. But at this point, the phone call I got, and this was at the end of, the Mar end of March, beginning of April, is how much is it going to cost for us for permits and how many copies do we need to submit to you for these permits to put lockdown doors on the clinic? And oh, oh by the way, this doesn't require hotspot oversight. Now, doesn't require I, I, I presided over the building of the new hospital. Nobody ever said to me, oh, by the way, this doesn't require hotspot oversight. There's only one reason why you would say that. You would only say that because you want to exclude Oshpot from the process. I, as the authority having jurisdiction, will bring Oshpot into the process every inch of the way. John, could uh, you? I, I just don't feel like uh, we're, we're being dealt with openly and honestly. When I'm getting phone calls like this from an architect who is already working under contract, and he wants to know the submittal requirements and the timetable for the issuance of the building permits. John, and, uh, OSHPOD is an acronym, right? For Office of gonna... Statewide Health Planning and Development. That's correct. And they have jurisdiction over the construction of all health facilities. That's correct. Thank you. That's what I was going to ask you to, to spell out the acronym. But thank you very much, John. John, can I ask John? Uh, yes, Jerry. Who was, did the architect say who he was working for? He said he was working with the Howard Foundation. Okay. He didn't say that was his client. He didn't want to talk to, to me about who his client was specifically. Okay. Well, it, it does seem as though there's been um, mixed messages and, and that the city wasn't involved in either of those mixed messages. So. Um, we do have it on our agenda. Is, is there anyone else from the public who wanted to speak? Yes, Ace, Just one further comment. Uh, sure. Yeah, just a question. As I said before, I think that the city manager was on the Howard Foundation. I, previous city manager. When, when, when was the changeover? She left in October. Because, you know, there was, this was, has been discussed in the Howard Foundation for quite some time. I'm sure that she was included in those discussions. You know, I think part of the reason to have somebody, the city manager on the Howard Foundation was just for that very reason, is so that she'd know what's going on with the hospital. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't, what I'm saying is I don't think there was any uh, deliberate, uh, mm -hmm. secret reason to exclude you from deliberation. I mean, I think that the fact that the city manager was actually on the Howard Foundation you know, yeah, I, speaks I think to there's, that. There's also, there's completely, different players and different agendas from the Hospital Foundation and the Measure B Committee. And they may be on very different tracks as to where, you know, where they're headed. And then we have the Board of Supervisors that's ultimately um, hasn't made any decisions to move forward, but, but the, other, um, the other players may. Each. And Jerry has something he wanted to add? I, I think it was the governing board that I'm on now that she was on, not the foundation board. Does anybody know? Because I heard it was the foundation. I, you're on the governing board. I know. That. I, I believe I replaced her, and she had replaced. I well, uh, that could be. I mean, Bruce, I, I certainly. I'm no expert. And city manager had left before major B was passed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So um, anyway, this has been very uh, interesting to hear the different information that we're we're learning about this, and we do have on our agenda. Um, and, and in our packet, a proposed, uh, I guess it's a resolution that we could consider to um, weigh in on where we stand, where what our legal um, responsibilities are, and some of our concerns are. Do do we want to deal with that tonight, or do we want to? I'd like to hear what, what Jim has. That's entirely your call, whether you want to adopt a resolution or not, or take any action or not. But. Um, at the last meeting, I got some very emphatic instruction <laughs> telling me that it's time for this uh, to take action. Yes. Be prepared to take action at your next meeting. And I was told to draft a resolution that recites the legal authority of the city to be involved in mm -hmm. this.
decision whether this facility is going to be constructed or not. Um, and, and that there was a sense of uh, being excluded, that we were lacking information. So we, we, we wanted to recite our legal basis and we wanted to let the Board of Supervisors know that we expected to be a participant in the discussion. And so that's what I tried to do. Right. And I certainly appreciated uh, your, your writing that up. And uh, so it's, uh, yeah, Jerry has this. So this is more a question for Jim. The, the fact that we, I, and I reviewed your resolution, and it just basically just states the law and uh, what rules apply, et cetera. It's not, I guess, uh, exclusive of dealing with and being uh, on some sort of partnership with the county or being included if we pass that resolution. Is that correct? That's true. That's true. Basically, uh, Basically, the uh, California Code of Regulations say that no facility, no, no uh, psychiatric health facility may be licensed if they're not in compliance with local zoning and building and fire codes. And so, they, and they have to, the applicant for the license has to demonstrate in writing that they are in compliance. And so, um, so we're merely asserting, um, our, I guess, our rights as a city? by passing this resolution? That was the direction given, correct. All right. Um, so, uh, do anybody want to move forward? Uh, my, my own thought right now is that it's it may, given what we've heard from both the Measure B Committee representatives and from our um, Board of Supervisor member, that we it isn't going to happen in the next few months, there's a, a process that's going to unfold over a period of months with the needs assessment and then looking at potential sites to meet that need. And then if Howard Hospital is identified as one of the possibilities, defining what kind of facility it is, how big of a facility, is it locked down, is it not? All of those things are not in front, you know, they're not ripe for action yet. So my personal thought is that we don't really need to be um, formally adopting the resolution right now, but I don't think it would hurt at all to uh, be on record. Well, I would, I would think that if you're going to take action, it ought to be unanimous action. We're mm -hmm. missing one council member here tonight already, and um, a divided uh, uh, action on a resolution would be, I think, less effective than, uh, mm -hmm. than unanimous of those present. So, um, how do other council members, would you like to postpone actually adopting this resolution at the moment? I, I agree with Jim that I think unanimous. I got to tell you, um, I, for one, would love to volunteer to attend the Measure B meetings on behalf of the city, but uh, at the same time, I kind of feel like we want to send the message that, I think what I said at that meeting is that we want to seat at the table as we discuss this and make sure that our residents are kept apprised. And, and I know that um, I had had some conversations with Jed, but leading up to him getting appointed, et cetera. And so I didn't have any conversations with Jed as far as, hey, this is what we're discussing at the meetings, and I'm now getting the agenda. So I, I agree with you, uh, Supervisor Krosky, that yeah, they would probably post it and all that. And maybe it's a little bit of, uh, you know, our fault for not being more proactive, but at the same time, you know, meetings get posted all the time and people don't show up. So <clears throat> I'm kind of of the mind, and, and I'm willing to postpone it till Ron is here, but I'd be of the mind that we still pass the resolution to assert that we have, you know, that these are the laws and our rights, but with the idea that we're still looking at a project that hasn't been um, uh, yeah, finalized, and so we just want to see at the table as we look at this and whether or not it's going to happen in our community or not, we keep an open mind and we move forward. There's certainly a lot of, um, you know, un unanswered questions that are extremely relevant to the city of Willits uh, if this project does rise to the level of being an actual proposal um, because, you know, the things that uh, Chief Wilkes brought up, among others, that um, it does d directly affect not only the residents but the city, the agencies that... Um, that are impacted, you know, financially and potentially with personnel. Um, I, I felt like um, the resolution was worded very strongly, and I, I have an open mind about whether we, whether it would be appropriate to have some kind of a, of a psychiatric facility in our community. But I certainly think all those unanswered questions have to come up 
before we make that decision. And I think the city has uh, to be at least somewhat in the driver's seat. You know, uh, the Board of Soups has their their responsibility for implementing Measure B, but we have responsibility for what happens in the city. So uh, that was brought out very strongly last meeting, and I think it's absolutely the case. So I'm glad that you did that work, because I think that, that lays out um, that we have that responsibility legally and morally, and um, we don't necessarily need to act in haste, because things have, have slowed down from where they were at the March meeting of the Measure B committee. So is that is that acceptable for? Uh, well, I don't know, you yeah. have to talk. Yeah. I, I think that, that Ron um, was, was very clear on what his thoughts were. He gave direction specifically that he was in support of a resolution, and I continue to be in support of a resolution uh, to assert the city's, um, the city's um, leading role in this, since it's within the city boundaries. And um, I feel like we would be neglecting our responsibility to the community if we didn't do that. Um, I, I would expect that the county, when they're fighting for a county on a state level, would do the same thing to advocate for the county of Mendocino. And it's our job to advocate for the city of Willits. Um, we're not making any decisions by passing this resolution that we want one thing or the other, just simply that we're asserting our rights to, um, to be involved in the process. So I'm very much in favor of the resolution. Are you looking at maybe waiting till Ron is back, or are you willing to... I think since so. it's pretty clear, Ron made his, his feelings very clear that he was in favor of it. Um, I feel comfortable moving forward knowing that if it went that direction, certainly Ron's not going to have a problem with it. Okay. Yes. Is that a motion? I'll make a motion to uh, a, then I will second approve your motion. that resolution. So it would, be, uh, it, would not, it would not be unanimous in that Ron is absent, but it would be unanimous among the four who are present if we, if we well, go ahead. We, so have we have a from Larry yet. We have a motion and a second. Discussion and a discussion. I've already had my discussion. I know where I'm going to vote. So let's roll. All right. <laughs> let's have a roll call vote. Councilmember Gonzalez. Yes. Stransky. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Mayor Strong. Yes. I would hope to work with all of you and uh, let's keep everybody advised. Thank you very much and thank you for showing up tonight. We are moving on to the consent calendar, item four, which includes uh, council meetings of May 9th, disbursement journals, a resolution. This one is important to note uh, that will allow Caltrans and their contractor to work on the Sherwood Road expansion project during the evening hours between 9 p.m. and 6 a.m. for approximately one month, and that's. Um, so that it doesn't disrupt the traffic during the daytime hours, and they will then, during those nighttime hours, be able to have uh, traffic control, so people might have to wait 10 or 15 minutes while they're uh, moving their equipment around, uh, but they won't be doing that during the daytime hours. Uh, that, and then purchase, approving a purchase of two new servers, hardware, software, wall mount, racks, cabinets, extended service agreements, to support the wastewater treatment plant SCADA upgrade in an amount not to exceed 32,800. And to approve a contract with Klein Investigations uh, with for law enforcement background investigations not to exceed $10,000 for a one year period. And that's to allow um, the clearing, the, the background information that we have to have for new um, police is it, it's only for police officers? Police officers so. and dispatchers. And dispatchers, okay. So those are the items on the consent calendar. Does anybody I'll, I'll move the consent calendar. I would like to ask a question on D. And I have a question on C, just a quick question. Okay, so rather than pull them off, can we just go ahead and, and get the questions answered first? Go ahead, Larry. Okay, uh, it says in the agenda that uh, the cost is going to be uh, so much money and then at the end I want to know how much the payout is for the hardware because it's not going to be included in in this uh, 
resolution as I saw it. You're talking about the item D, which yes. is the 32,000. Which is 32,000, and then it says, I and I don't know where it is in here, but anyhow, it says that because of the short time frame that the professional services expires and the city must purchase the servers right out. Yeah, let me answer that. Um, approximately a month ago, um, the SCADA equipment actually came before you and you approved the purchase of the SCADA, SCADA, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, um, and we were ready to roll on it. However, when we started to install it, it was found out that our current computer system was out of date. So this is updating the computer system to accommodate the hardware that we already bought. Okay. So uh, we have this professional services contract and it is running out, but now we need the, the, the last piece of the computer equipment to make it all work. So this would be the last piece. Okay, thank you. Okay, and uh, yeah. Sabrina, <coughs> on item C. Item C, uh, my question is whether or not the homes that are adjacent to that work that's gonna take place on the Sherwood Road, do we have any assurance from Caltrans that those homeowners have been notified of the of the work that may take place or that I know it's been publicly posted but I just want some additional assurance that that they're aware that that could take place and they have the opportunity to uh, give some public comment on it do we know if that's taken place I do not know um, I know that the only other option is to work during the daytime and during the daytime uh, it has sort of been determined that that would be an unacceptable traffic blockage so that was sort of the only way to do it I think we should um, request, you know, make sure that, that Caltrans is. We did make a request at a Caltrans meeting two months ago, I believe it was. I asked if they were going to notify the occupants so that they would have an opportunity to come before the city and weigh in. But um, I'm a little nervous about approving that without without assurance that they've had they're aware of it. I mean, I, I know that we're looking at maybe the greater good of the, the Brook Trails community, community, but if you and I live next door, mm -hmm. we might feel a little different. Mm -hmm. So I would be in favor of, of pulling item C and just bringing it back on the, at the next meeting if you can't give me a, a reason why it would hold the project up. I think it would. I, I don't. I don't know. I know that they were trying to uh, start. Beginning of June. Um, they were starting the beginning of June. I doubt that that's going to happen. I really think okay. they're probably going to start a little bit later. I don't know. Maybe Dusty has more information. Or John yes. has. But we have. A, can we do have a request to pull item C from the consent calendar? Unless so, given a reason. And and so I suggest we act on the rest of the consent calendar and then. Um, have a separate vote on that item. Is that okay with everybody? Well, John might be able to clear it up real quick. I, I was just going to say, after the last Caltrans meeting, Bill Wilson did uh, let us know in the staff meeting that, that those, specifically those properties, have been notified oh. by hand. Oh, uh, okay. Caltrans. Okay. 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 With that being said, I'm comfortable okay. Thank keeping you. it in there. Okay, so it will leave it in the consent calendar, and um, we, do we have a motion and a second? I don't think we had a second, I think, or did we? Did we have a second? I'll second the motion. Okay, so motion and a second, thank you. Um, and, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that they have been notified, and they will be affected by that night work that's right adjacent to them. But everybody else who lives up Sherwood Road is going to be very... Um, Relieved to have this be done at night instead of daytime. Yes, John. I'll follow that up tomorrow morning. Okay, great. Okay, uh, let's have a roll call on that. Um, public comment. Public comment. Anybody from the public want to speak on this item? Seeing none, we will have a roll call vote. Thank you. Councilmember Gonzalez. Yes. 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 Mayor Strong. Yes. Okay. Moving ahead. Uh, we have the right to appeal if anyone here wishes to appeal any items that we pass on you have generally 90 days to do so um, we are not having any commission or agency meetings tonight so we're going to go to city manager reports and recommendations um, great our first is Stephanie Gabrett Sierra city manager um, our first item is the, an update regarding the watershed salvage uh, operation. We have Todd McMahon from NCRM who is here to give an update. 
Uh, he's done all his due diligence and he's bid out contracts and, and so we have some really good news and I'd like to invite him up to kind of talk about the, um, the contracts that he's lined up for us. Good evening. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I assume you all have the update I prepared. Could you just, um, is there anything significant that changed between this and what we got in the packet? No. Dollar amounts. Yeah, he was able to put in dollar amounts. He didn't okay. quite have the dollar Thank amounts. And, and we wanted to, we didn't have them until okay. just a, two days ago, so we couldn't put them on the front yeah. agenda. Thank you. So, um, so, yeah, so we've gone through our due diligence process. We've done a lot of biological assessment. We've had, um, um, the resource agencies and the public um, uh, input as far as the project. Um, we have uh, a, a good handle compared to the last time I spoke with you when we were speculating on a lot of things. Um, so we did uh, put the job out to bid. We had um, six logging contractors bid the job, and, uh, four different um, local mills bid the job. Um, we made recommendations as noted in the memo. Uh, as far as who we're recommending, um, we are recommending uh, the, on the logging below bid, which happens to also be the, the logger we're most comfortable using, and in the mill, we're taking the highest bid, of course. Um, the, um, the permit for the emergency notice has been submitted, um, and really where we're at right now is moving forward with contracting with the uh, new bidders. And, um, securing the purchase agreements and uh, both the contract and purchase agreements and Sarah will execute and um, we're looking at um, starting operations probably in the middle of next month so I just really want to know if anybody had any questions I know I had Larry out and, um, and uh, I've had Scott out a number of times and um, we're feeling pretty good about the project and so I'm, I'm hoping to get a chance to get a tour too, but it um, but like, sounds like you're doing great work. Any other questions for Todd? I just want to thank uh, for the tour. The tour was very great, and uh, uh, I've seen sites out there that I didn't haven't seen before. And the burn was, you need to go see the burn. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, really different how it just, the wind swirled around and took parts and not parts. And is there anyone in the public who would like to address the council on this item? Anybody else on the what council? Are the numbers, um, as far as volume or prices? Or? Yeah. So um, uh, the prices we got on the deck for the best price was five zen we went delivered to uh, MRC. Uh, on the pine, the, we first proposed this project, uh, the market was higher over the last five months. It's dropped considerably. The pine is especially top. So we're looking at 475 delivered to Schneider Dock in Eureka. Um, Here's an extra copy if you want to pass that to oh, us. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you like Here's, a copy? You could, you could get a copy that has all the, the numbers in it. <laughs> and um, our logging costs are. Um, We had about $300 delivered on the dead herd and about uh, $425 on the pine. So the pine doesn't make a lot of money. Um, there is net, net stumpage, which is essentially what the, the city is going to receive on the pine, but um, the dead fur is sort of covering it. And if we didn't harvest the pine, the dead fur cost would be higher. Therefore, their revenue would be lower, and we would still have this fuel issue out there. So, yeah. even if it broke even, I would still recommend it going forward, and we do make some revenue on it. So, and the ultimate bottom line on this is that you're projecting that we'll have about a net revenue of four hundred thousand. Yeah. So that's what I that's what I um, pontificated on originally yeah. in my proposal. And like I said, the market has dropped off. Um, the lumber market is very good, but locally, because we do not have a lot of mills, um, we don't necessarily follow what the Pacific Northwest market is doing. And um, so the market's dropped off somewhat, but through our due diligence and looking at this, we've actually found more volume out there. So I think the net impact is still going to be approximately the same number of dollars I talked about the first time. Okay. 
I thought your report was comprehensive and also easy to, to yeah. understand because this is not my area of specialty. <laughs> and so when I first started reading, I was thinking, oh, this, but I found it pretty easy to understand. Good. So Good. thank you yeah. for writing and, uh, it. Yeah, to all of you, uh, as we start operations, if you want to come up and see what's going on, I'd be glad to facilitate that. I think that'd be a good idea. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a, the watershed is a beautiful resource for the city, and if you haven't spent time up there, it really is a gem. I just wanted to thank you, you know, your original proposal of this, I mean, you were conservative, you know, I, I hate being told you're going to make millions and you don't, <laughs> and at the same time, I, you know, you were very conservative with your figures, and it seems like it paid off. Thank you. Thank you. And again, uh, does anyone from the public want to address us on this? If not, we'll go back to our city manager on uh, okay. other matters over. Um, yes, item B is uh, last uh, at the last council meeting. We had a actually a special meeting right before our regular scheduled meeting where we talked about goal setting. Um, I thought it would be nice if you all had copies of the goals with the stars attached and so you saw who voted, but not who, it's just how many <laughs> votes each proposal uh, received and, and so I just included that in your packet and I just wanted to highlight that for you so you have that in your back pocket. Um, as for other verbal reports, um, I have a number of issues. First of all, a little update on Caltrans. Uh, we are actually a little bit ahead of schedule on the Caltrans Main Street project. Um, and we are w they are working on right now is, sh is the Chevron station to Oak, is, which is almost finished. And they're trying to get that intersection cleared um, so we can make left turns again before in front of Safeway uh, before the Memorial Day weekend. So they're hoping to get all that stuff out of there in a nice clear intersection in time for the holiday weekend. Um, we've had a number of questions regarding the activity uh, where the old dry cleaner was on Mendocino. And um, so I, we found out that what they're doing is additional um, environmental remediation. Uh, that site was a sort of a hazardous site. There are testing wells um, and they are treating that and they're going as far as the plume is to, to test on that. So no, there is no development happening. All that is testing and remediation of the site is what you see is the activity you see on that site. Um, wanted to uh, let folks know that we're looking at June 19th for a budget workshop. Uh, our finance department is working very hard on putting things together for the workshop. And so it looks like look, it, we were trying to do it earlier. Uh, now it's looking like the 19th. So we're working hard on that. And if we get done at the 19th, we might be able to pass the budget by the end of June, which would be awesome. We're trying. <laughs> we're doing the best we can. Um, another thing I, I would like to talk about is, is later on this evening we're going to have the second reading of our vacancy ordinance and I would like to bring up and, and ask the question of, of council um, I would like to bring the right now the ordinances are located at the back of the agenda it's sort of the very last thing we do I would very much like to and I'd like your feedback on this to bring the ordinances to more the beginning of the agenda because this is where really you pass laws and it's pretty important to the public to see that. And, I'm, and if you uh, are agreeing with that, I'd like to take the steps necessary to bring ordinances uh, further up on the agenda. And that's sort of why I your feedback on that. That's good. Yeah, and I think also a lot of the public shows up for those sort of things. And mm -hmm. I hate to have people wait, or we end up taking them out of order so that we can be kind to the public. So. I agree with that. OK, so uh, in further meetings, um, if there's procedural things that need to be done for your vote, I'll bring that back. So it would be up with public matters? Yes. Anything. Yeah. That, yes. That makes sense to Sort me. of the first thing we do is you guys can make laws. Hmm. Would that go before public communication or after or anything? Uh, it's, it's really up to you where, where you think you would like yeah. to see it. I would like to see it with public matters. So okay. it, those are kind of, they, yeah. <laughs> Ordinances are public matters, as are some of the other things we put there. So it's okay. things that we're setting policy or, or actual ordinances um, that encourage the uh, public to be able to participate with those. And then the other stuff where we go through all of our reports from committees, that's somewhat less, um, less public input usually on those. Sounds good. OK. Um, also wanted to report, I met with Jerry Ward uh, last week, or this week actually, and Robert Carlton regarding our garbage rates. 
and the fact that as the mayor has spoken to us uh, several times the commodities market is not doing well and so we are going to be I'm going to be bringing a, a very slight increase in rates uh, probably in the next month uh, because of the low commodities rate and the return there and, I, and they're looking at an increase of 3.63 percent to the garbage rates um, which is less than a dollar but it's uh, it, it's necessary for them to break even but that's going to be at a future meeting, but I'm just giving you uh, a notice because I know the mayor has been uh, watching those meetings. And Robert Carlson is-, is Carlson. Carlson, I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, has been working hard. He's still uh, actually negotiating some terms of an additional contract with Jerry Ward to, to kind of modernize the contract a little bit um, as a result of the bottom sort of falling out of the commodities market in China. Um, want to let folks know that we are ending sort of we are close to the end of the fiscal year um, we are working fast and furiously and uh, much of our staff has not taken much time off and so they're going to need to take their time off before they lose it so you're going to see people taking time off here and there and, and so I wanted to kind of warn you because <laughs> that is happening because I'm encouraging staff to take their time um, I don't want them to lose it so that will be happening um, last Friday was our um, all staff meeting and, and sort of company barbecue. Uh, we had two Shining Star Awards for the first quarter. I wanted to uh, congratulate Keenan O'Shea. He won our Shining Star Award for the quarter. Um, and for the second quarter, uh, we gave the Shining Star Award to the entire Public Works Department for their great work over the winter. And uh, they worked really hard and we were really proud of them and we had a really nice barbecue. and. I uh, also had two service awards, John Sherman and Andrea Trincado, both had their 10-year star, got their 10-year stars, so I uh, wanted to congratulate them. Um, and that's all I have. All right. Okay. So, um, moving on, um, administration, city clerk, do you have? Okay, finance. Well, we've got... I guess the report is that you're working fast is, and furiously. We're working fast and furiously. Okay. We are we are trying very hard to uh, get ready for a a council but council workshop. Big, big council yeah. workshop. That's I just want to throw it out there that I did send an email that I am out of the area oh. on June nineteenth. My no. flight doesn't come in until that evening. Okay. Oh, be available well, the yeah. next morning, but well, it won't be June nineteenth then. <laughs> well, yeah, Maybe the twentieth. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we should make sure that the public knows about that. It, budgets seem to be rarely attended by the public, but I just want to put out there that that is one of the most important things that we have to do as a council, and we want public input on how we spend the city's money, which is your money. So uh, I hope people are willing to do a little bit of um, looking at a bunch of numbers and figuring out how does that reflect our priorities. So please uh, feel free to get involved. Okay, and we will need to let the public know when the rescheduled time is, so it's not June 19th after all. Okay, um, human resources. Okay, and legal. Uh, just a reminder again, our, at our next meeting, June 13th, uh, we will have on our agenda the uh, cannabis business tax mm -hmm. issue, uh, seeking a resolution from the council that will allow us to put that on the, uh, yeah. the member ballot. And we're going to have a, a, a speaker here who will give some education uh, about uh, the tax uh, amounts and recommendations about what they be. And we will also um, be setting the initial tax rates for the first two years. Oh. And so the stakeholders, the interested parties who uh, want to know about that ought to be attending that meeting. Okay, so we're not going to wait and do that afterwards. No, we're going we're to have great. in our ordinance the maximum rates and the initial rates. That's great. And I, by the way, I know it's going to be very helpful to have a consultant that knows a lot about what's going on in other communities, but I thought your, um, your explanation and your memo was very well presented. Thank you. I hope to, I hope to save lots of portions of it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so, too. Uh, all right, so that's your, your total yes. report there. Um, moving on. Excuse me, Gary. Public safety. Council, thank you for, again for having me here. Uh, first of all, I want to say that you're going to see a lot more of me 
of me at these meetings to give updates on our much needed firehouse project. Um, second of all, I want to say that staff has made it very comfortable, although I don't work for the city, uh, they make it very comfortable uh, in the meetings for me to be there. I feel welcome and uh, certainly a part of what we do, and I think that relationship is important for the fire district. Uh, in 2013, uh, actually, I'll hold on one sec. I want to thank you guys also for the resolution as a part of our, uh, in, in support of the firehouse, that's a big part of our packet to USDA for, for our funding. Um, and, and it feels good to see that unanimous vote at the, at the bottom of that resolution. So thank you for allowing that. Um, in 2013, as we all know, uh, we were going after a firehouse project to build a building on the current property that we have um, sitting, sitting across the street here at 74 East Commercial. Uh, that project at the time was roughly $3.1 million. Um, we, did, we didn't pass the, the bond measure. Uh, out of 4,800 registered voters, uh, we saw a voter turnout of 1,573. So we missed, uh, we missed the percentage by approximately 93 votes. Um, and that, those numbers become more, uh, more uh, important and apparent of, of, of how important that election was here shortly. Um, we moved forward with the project. Uh, staff and our board has saved money just like they have been since our uh, special tax was put into place in 2003 um, to, in order to try to build this firehouse that this community was recognized way back in the day, the need was recognized way back in the day uh, by Chief Smith. Um, moving forward from that, uh, we've, we've had the fires, we've had an opportunity, we need to move forward. Our building is dilapidated. We're not able to maintenance it the way it needs to be. It, we need a new structure. Um, it's a laundry list of reasons why that I could, I could go on and talk about more and more, but I'd rather, I'd rather talk to you about the progress that we're making at this point. When we sat down and, uh, with our architect that we've had the whole time, uh, as we went back out to USDA to, to find funding again, uh, he told us uh, basically he was too busy to move forward with the project. He, uh, we spent a lot, of, a lot of money with him, but he did finish his contractual obligations to us. Um, but ethically, we felt like he should still be a part of this project as he basically owns the instruments of service, the drawings, the, the things that we needed in order to have an updated preliminary architectural report for our building. That's a part of the USDA funding mechanism. So quickly, we had to put together an emergency uh, resolution and hire an architect to come in. Uh, we were very lucky, uh, almost a blessing in disguise, I would say. We ended up with an architect, uh, his name's uh, Dennis Dong of Calpo Hom and Dong out of Sacramento. He builds nothing but firehouses. So his experience already, we've only met one time, talked over the phone multiple times, has already uh, came to fruit. He's able to meet the short requirements we have to get on the ballot for the November election. Um, he's able to get us the preliminary architectural report that we will need for USDA to secure that uh, funding mechanism. However, one of the problems we ran into is that project, it was $3.1 million in 2013, uh, because of this being uh, essential services, uh, follow, us falling under the Essential Services Act, the fact that it's a public works project, we're funded by tax dollars, uh, would easily be in the range of $650 a square foot which calculates, this is not his engineer's cost estimate, but it puts the price at $650 a square foot uh, at $7.15 million in five years. For the same exact metal building with the same exact office space that we had in 2013. No upgrades, uh, no, no changes. Um, we've deleted as much as we can delete out of the structure. Uh, I asked uh, Mr. Dong how is this the most efficient way to build a firehouse? Maybe a steel structure is it the way we need to go. Um, he said it's only $650 a square feet a foot uh, because it's a steel building and it's rectangular. It doesn't have any odd shapes to it. Uh, areas like Santa Rosa, we're looking at $1,000 a square foot. He has a project going in uh, the Sacramento Valley right now at $1,150 a square foot. Uh, ours is $650. Um, this is a huge hit for us. It's a huge hit for our community. But as, as the fire chief, it's my job to let the community know that we still need a firehouse. We still have to figure out a way to move forward. We have to house our equipment. We're very fortunate in this community. We, our fire, with the help of the city and the water system that we have here, we're a three. We have an ISO rating of a three, insurance services office rating of a three in our, in our hydrant grid. Uh, that's almost unheard of for a volunteer fire department. It's that special. But if we start losing our infrastructure, and we don't have a firehouse here anymore to house that equipment to get our radiuses right in this community, 
we're going to see those numbers fall. And where we're that's going to, some insurance companies still use that ISO rating of a way, as a mechanism for setting their premiums. We could see an effect of, of premium cost in town if we start losing our fire protection within the community. Now, I know the price of that uh, structure is large. Um, we're going to keep moving forward. Uh, but what we really need is education. And I need your guys' help. I need everybody in this room's help to reach out to the public. Even the, I want to talk to the people that, that say that's too much money or that we don't need a firehouse. They need to come to our firehouse and come and talk to us. We can't have 1,573 voters in November. We have 4,850 registered voters in our district. We need 4,800 people to come into that firehouse and talk to us about what our needs are in this community and how we can further this fire protection here. Um, remember, we, re we uh, provide for, we're a true all-risk fire department. We provide for vehicle accidents, structure fires, vegetation fires, across the board. We have a swift water rescue team, hazardous materials team. I could go, I could go on and on and on. We have to have the resources in order to provide that. So I, I do appreciate the letter of support, and I'm going to keep moving forward. As, as we keep trudging through this uh, uh, process, I hope to uh, stay on the agenda under, uh, certainly under, uh, under our um, excuse me, public safety section, and I'll keep the council updated. Um, but I would really like to see people come through our door and ask questions. Mm -hmm. And if council and, and the folks in this room um, can please reach out to your friends and neighbors and come down and see see what we're see why it costs them. Come and ask the hard questions. Why does it cost so much money? Uh, we we need those questions. It's too easy to sit at home and say we're never going to do that or vote that kind of money. And I I need people to come and talk. And uh, thank you for your time. Uh, we need to build this firehouse, and I think we're going to do it still. Um, but we have to do it as a community. It can't just be the the fire department going after a. Thank you. Just a very good point. For those of us who want to take to take that to the next level and get involved in encouraging others to vote yes, are there going to be any kind of uh, community meetings, educational meetings? Do you have anything calendared yet? Uh, we don't have it calendared yet, but I have reached out to uh, certainly our architect and our new consultant. Her name's Lori Adams. She's wonderful. Um, we are going to hold a, a town hall meeting to have those folks uh, come in. My plan is to reach out to the local organizations as we've done in the past, because there's going to be obviously be a change in per unit uh, fire tax, and it's going to be more than what we had said before in order to meet those kind of uh, obligations. Um, and that's going to raise a lot of questions. So I was, I'm trying to reach out to the public first, and that way we can get kind of the, the mix going, and then we'll have that meeting where everybody can ask those questions of the architect of myself uh, and, uh, and of our consultant uh, in, a, in a public forum. We're, so all, we're always concerned about money when we're thinking about these things, but when your house is on fire, <laughs> money is the least right. of your concerns. We're just grateful that you're there. We're, we're trying, and, and I have to tell you, the, the state recognizes our fire district, and I'll keep this short, uh, re recognizes our fire district as a disadvantaged, unincorporated community. Mm -hmm. However, we're bound to the same exact rules uh, for public works projects as the city of Santa Rosa, as the as San Francisco, Sacramento. So on one hand, we're recognized as being disadvantaged and, and, and they, they of course laugh going, we want to make sure that the services are provided to all these little islands and all these places that are out in the rural area. But when we need a firehouse to provide for those services, we still have to fall under the same exact rules as these as big city organizations. Um, and there's no money available for us uh, to help supplement those. Um, so we're we're working on that. On the other end, I'm, I'm, I have a lot of questions to ask of, uh, I've reached out to LAFCO, uh, their executive office, and uh, I, I, we have questions of why these small departments have to have to fall under these, these public works project, Department of Industrial Relations. Thank you, Chief Wolf. Thank you. Okay, and uh, Chief Warnock, do you have a report for us also? I have a bunch of stuff. All right, great. Scott Warnock, Chief of Police. Um, I've been in contact with a uh, police officer from Germany. He's a Berlin police officer, and he's coming to the United States to come to Frontier Days. Um, well, he's probably going to do some other stuff, too. <laughs> he's going to be here for Frontier Days, and he, he asked if he could get a tour of the police department and talk to us about policing here, etc. 
I invited him to ride in the parade with my wife and I, he and his wife, with us in the parade, and he's looking forward to doing that. So. Uh, we have three, we had three officers out on injury, so our overtime has gone back up again. Uh, one returned just after uh, a day, uh, but we still have two out. Hopefully one uh, will return in June and the other within a, a week or two. So we'll bring our numbers back up. The last trainee of the last three we hired um, should be off of his field training by the end of June, right before Frontier Days, or maybe possibly during Frontier Days. Um, and we have a new hire. He's from Rio Dell Police Department. He's an experienced uh, officer. He's worked at Clear Lake Police Department and several others. Um, and he's going to start June 11th. And he, sh he will only take a matter of several weeks to do his field training uh, by law and uh, by his abilities. So we're looking forward to that. Um, uh, last Wednesday, myself and the Fortuna uh, police chief met with Assembly Person Wood up in Sacramento. We discussed uh, primarily AB 931, which is uh, an important issue to law enforcement. It's the uh, use of force, uh, uh, deadly force, um, changing it from reasonable uh, force to necessary. And I won't go into details on that. I also, myself, I met with Senator McGuire's staff because he wasn't available. And this was all in conjunction with the California Police Chiefs Association. So that was a, a good experience. And I felt very positive meeting with them. Uh, we, I mentioned before that we're uh, online to do the live scan cannabis. Today we just got a letter from the uh, FBI uh, authorizing us. So tomorrow we have it scheduled for several of the applicants to go through their, their live scanning to get that going. Um, we are putting together a proposal to, for two canines. Uh, we hope to... Um, we're going to propose, eventually when we get this together, to, to get uh, two dogs two hand and use our handlers. The dogs will be, um, I didn't write this down, the dogs will be uh, drug sniffing dogs, obviously not marijuana. Um, they'll be drug sniffing, they'll be, um, <laughs> thanks John, they'll be, um, Tracking dogs, so if we have some missing children or al Alzheimer's uh, patients, etc., will uh, and suspects will be able to to track, and they're all they will also be uh, in the proposal. They will also be uh, handler protection, which is the, the standard dogs when we take them out when there's a, a suspect. Um, we're hoping to get a giant schnauzer. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so they actually use those in Europe. Um, the reason we want the canines is we think they're a great ambassador uh, for the police department. They, they save injuries for not only law enforcement, but for the suspects. Um, also, we will we'll be able to use them in the uh, schools to uh, find illegal drugs. Um, and in the proposal, we'll have all the information. So I just wanted to alert you that we're, we're starting to work on that. And last but not least, one of my favorite is during Frontier Days, I have authorized uh, a change in uniform. We, uh, and and there is, it won't be required for the officers, but the officers will be allowed to wear Wranglers, or it doesn't matter what brand, but they'll be able to wear jeans, uh, cowboy boots, a uh, shirt similar to this, not the exterior vest, and a cowboy hat with their duty belt. So in the spirit of Frontier Days. Cool. And to answer your question, uh, Ms. Rodriguez, no accidents uh, related to the construction that have been reported to the police as of yet. Okay. We have had problems with the, um, the marking of the lanes, and some people are confused, and we've talked to Caltrans about to try to to rectify that. And I still see people trying to turn left at the yes. Highway 20 Safeway. Yes. Well, that will be gone shortly. So that will be a big help. Yeah. 
I have a question about the, the live scan. Uh, Adrian had told us previously that the live scan would be available to our community shortly, and you had mentioned the yes, live scan. Yes, it is available. We haven't advertised it. So um, right now I'm sending, I'm sending my staff down to, to Ukiah to get fingerprinted, you and can, the city of Will, the, no, sorry, the uh, school district is very much interested in being able to send people, so we're now set up and ready to go. Yes, but it's going to have to be by appointment. So the okay. community service officer does that. The, currently, the community service officer is also covering for the shortage of dispatchers. Okay. So he's only, most weeks, he's available two days a week, and plus he has all the other. But the so, fact that we can make an appointment is, is an yes. improvement. That's wonderful. Right. Um, there was something else I was going to say. Would the, uh, uh, would the police department be open to setting something up uh, with a school district for, uh, for example, a special night that we could set up ahead of time in, say, September? They usually like to set something up so that they're, because they're all, all their volunteers have to be fingerprinted. Mm -hmm. They like to set up a special night so all the volunteers that want to get fingerprinted can do it on one night. And we had tried to set that up for the fall, but we, we weren't, the city wasn't ready for that. We, we, we could entertain that. Okay. Um, one of the, I remember what I was going to say is originally the plan was to buy a portable device. Uh, right now we have to take people back to the jail cell. So I hope people aren't offended, because uh, that's, the, the, that's where the device is. Originally, we were going to get a portable device, and we had planned to be able to go out to the school districts, to various places, to have, not, to, to have days like that where they don't have to come to the police department. But none of the portable devices we have found are certified for California. So we didn't find that out until after we tried to order one. So. Okay, well, I'll connect with... Uh with Laura, she's human resources for the school district, and Sleeper. I'll let her know. Laura Sleeper, yeah. All right, thank you. All right, um, and we're going to go to community. I, I'm thinking that uh, after we finish the staff reports, we'll do the uh, enactment of ordinance before we do the internal agency stuff. So, um, yes, community development. Do you gentlemen have something to bring to us? Um, not really much to report other than uh, the good news is that construction applications are picking up. Okay. Uh, so there, there, there is a little bit of a light uh, in the end of the tunnel and hopefully it's not a train headed this way, so um, <laughs> we're working on that. Uh, code enforcement, there's an awful lot of need for code enforcement in this town, uh, but things have been going well and I've been getting cooperative. Uh, there'll be some long-term issues that we're going to uh, have to bring, probably some of them before you soon, but uh, we'll, we'll wait. Maybe we can get those taken care of before we have to bring this. John, can you give us an update on two properties, the Carlson Apartments and the old Willits Cafe? The community's been asking lots of questions. Yeah, there. that, uh, that slow-moving slow train wreck is still in progress. <laughs> um, the, uh, I just I just spoke with uh, Jeff Yoakum this morning, as a matter of fact, about the uh, Carlson Apartments. They're moving ahead. Um, the reason you haven't seen a lot of activity is because they're they're in the planning stages and they're getting plans drawn and all. So it all hasn't stuff. stopped. They're just in in the next phase. Right. They're just okay. not uh, not not gonna make it a lot of dust and smoke and. Uh, uh, not not visible progress, but they're making progress. Yeah. Exactly. Um, the uh, the uh, Willits Cafe, we ran into a snag in that there, as it turned out, there was uh, more asbestos in the building than we knew about. Uh, so we stopped and, and we got that taken care of and I am in possession of a release from air quality uh, at this point and I've released the demolition contractor to go ahead and proceed. So um, we have talked in a... Uh, I have talked with the property owner about the Willis Cafe sign, and he has, uh, in concept, donated that sign to the museum. Wonderful. Um, I have also talked to him about the KRL project, and uh, he's just asked to see a submittal uh, for what the proposal actually is, and he's open to the idea. Okay. The, the 
isn't really a project, but it's an idea of volunteers have expressed interest in painting those K rails in some uh, you know, well, more attractive way, and so it will. Taking, taking the Willis Cafe down and having that happen in conjunction would make a heck of a visual impact in this project. It would be neat to involve uh, kids, uh, school kids in the painting project, but we'll, we'll get to that when we can. Okay, thank you, John. And uh, yes, Dusty. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Council members, Dusty Dooley, City Planner. Um, just a, a, a few things. Um, there was a delay in the construction of the EV charging stations in the city public parking lot between Wood Street and Mendocino. Uh, construction is now slated to begin on Monday and we anticipate up to two weeks to finish construction. Um, staff will uh, be working with the contractor to make sure we're minimizing uh, how much area uh, we're, we're blocking uh, to support that construction effort. Uh, and I'll um, certainly spend some time talking to some folks downtown and, and make him aware of, of, of that parking restriction and, and that work that will be happening. Um, we're continuing to work with LAFCO and uh, feeding them necessary information on our SOI update um, and hopefully uh, at some point in the near future uh, I'll look forward to sharing their recommendation with you. Um, SOI meaning sphere CX, of influence. Excuse me, sphere of influence. So right now, by default, our sphere of influence is our city limits. Uh, and as we look to incorporate areas and grow our city limits, and um, it's important to have the sphere of influence beyond our city boundaries so that we can potentially annex additional properties as it makes sense. Um, we, uh, I think I reported that the state uh, Housing Community Development Department provided us with a high regional housing number of allocation for the county. Uh, we met uh, the, the various jurisdictions, the city and the county met today to um, finalize a letter to send to the state um, combating uh, those high numbers. Uh, I won't um, get into a long discussion as to um, that process and, and why it doesn't really reflect actual um, uh, growth uh, within within the county, um, but it was a, a positive conversation with the jurisdictions. It was sort of like I'll I'll trade you some uh, low income housing numbers for you know some moderate income housing numbers, and what we're trying to do is is balance it out so that none of us are having to go through some sort of painful rezoning process to recognize um, additional development opportunities that, that aren't necessarily real. Um, it appears that the city in any fashion or so is going to uh, be okay, um, but, but that certainly is not the case for some of the other jurisdictions, including the county. Um, we continue to see receive strong interest in establishing additional cannabis facilities. At this point, it appears that a lot of the properties that are left are, are of the, the higher end. Um, but um, folks have uh, continued to have a positive um, relationship with the city and going through the process, and, and that seems to attract more folks. Um, but the live scan system is up and working, so we do anticipate having at least our first two businesses up and running here um, sooner than later. Um, let's see, uh, things are progressing well with uh, the new hire for the new assistant planner, and, and hopefully, <coughs> the next meeting will actually have. Um, something formal to, to share with you. Um, yeah, that's what I had to share tonight. Any questions for? Quick question on the charging stations. What corner of the city lot? North, south, east, west? Yeah, thank you. It's uh, It'll be focused on the Mendocino side. So the entrance off of Mendocino into thank the parking you. lot will be blocked. The wood side will continue to be open and unrestricted. And I had a question on the uh, farmer's market. Has that been ironed out so that they're going to start like tomorrow? Yeah, um, as of the beginning of this meeting, we were waiting for a signed agreement uh, and then um, notification that adequate assurance had, had been obtained. Um, we did get some emails during this meeting. Good. So We were hoping to have so some So those were the, the two things left. Yeah, we, we worked hard to, to accommodate the market and, and let them uh, try it out at that location. So they are planning to uh, start tomorrow? Yeah, there's signs there that say so. Okay, but do we have insurance? Uh, the thing we're waiting on was uh, an insurance certificate? A sign of <coughs> insurance, yeah. And do they have that now? 
Well, like I said, we had emails submitted during this meeting. I, I looked at it briefly and got back to them and let them know that, you know, we'll, we got it and we'll look at it. So and they provided any? that both those things are completed, uh, then they've they met do. all requirements and the city's not going to have an issue with them moving in. Yeah. Regardless of where the farmer's market is, everybody needs to go tomorrow. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> we want to support our local farmer's market. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Feel free to shop at the businesses around the farmer's market. And like that, that too, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, I, I think that, that um, the potential for synergy there is really very good with the, them located there and bringing people in who want to go to the farmer's market or people who are going to the shops, going to, you know, seeing the farmer's market. It's really a win-win. Um, so I'm glad that that's moving ahead. Okay. Um, so the uh, public, thank you, I think we're... The Moving on to public works and engineering, besides the thing we already did. Uh, the only thing we had was the uh, Caltrans update, and I already did that. Okay. So we are going to move, I am, if there's no objection, going to move the enactment of ordinance item up now on the agenda before we do the city council uh, and committee reports so that those who are here for that be able to, to be here. All right. Um, thank you. Uh, so this is discussion and possible adoption of an ordinance adding Chapter 8.28 to the Willits Municipal Code entitled Vacant Commercial Property Registration and Property Maintenance. Um, I will save you from listening to me repeat probably what I've, I've said a couple times up here. Um, we did um, make those minor revisions that were identified and explained at the, at the last meeting where we uh, waived the first item and introduced the ordinance. Um, you have uh, the agenda summary report, a clean version of the, of the final ordinance, as well as an edited version showing those, those changes that were discussed at the last meeting. Uh, provided uh, is to the council's satisfaction. We're looking for the council, uh, obviously after conducting a public hearing, to determine that the project is exempt from CEQA and then to waive the second read and informally adopt the ordinance, which would take effect 30 days after adoption. Okay, thank you very much, Dusty. Um, so uh, anyone from the public would like to address the item on the uh, vacancy, commu commercial vacancy ordinance, please come on up and as usual, you know the drill. <laughs> Good evening, uh, Bruce Burton. I just uh, would like to encourage you to not pass this ordinance. I, I, uh, I've sat up there for a long time and I know the frustration of seeing vacancies downtown, but as being a business owner myself, Nobody has a vacancy on, out of desire. It's, it's because of some, mostly a set of circumstances that are somewhat beyond your control. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to see with Costco opening up in the next 60 days, there's going to be an additional pull against retail, local retail trade. And, uh, and I think you're giving a message of fear to the community. And I think that that's a, you know, it's a negative message. You're sending out a negative message. And I don't think that you want to be doing that right now. And I would encourage you to uh, try and find a positive way to, to get downtown revitalized. I talk to a lot of people about small towns because it is a, a real interest to me of how you do that. And in most small towns, they're not looking at vacancy, a small vacancy rate, they've got nothing at all. Um, and I think you're just adding another nail to the coffin of people that are going to be um, not wanting to be investing uh, in the real estate out here if they, if they run into a downturn or we have had a high turnover of retail businesses. There's not one retail business on Main Street that is 15 years old. Uh, the bank is the standard, but so anyway, I, I I could go on and on. I always run out of time, but I you know I'm, I just would encourage you, you're you're casting a spell of negativity over the town. I don't think it will accomplish your goal. It isn't going to accomplish getting uh, people into those businesses, and and I think you should use uh, you know a carrot, not a stick. Is there anyone else in the public who would like to address the council on this 
item. Okay, well, let's bring it up here. Are there any uh, comments from council members? No, just that I have heard overwhelming support. The Refi Ed Committee has met, gosh, many, many, many times and discussed this. We've heard from business owners who are in support of it. I'm in support of it. Uh, it's gone crazy on social media with people in our community talking about it, uh, meeting with members of the public, um, other business owners, entrepreneurs, and the majority of the people I talk to are eager to, to find out what the city is doing to step up and hold property owners uh, accountable. So I'm in favor of it. And I'd make a motion to approve uh, the ordinance adding chapter 8.28 to the municipal code entitled vacant commercial property registration and property maintenance and we have a second reading and we have a second reading okay and did you have a comment yeah i i just want to say when i got on the council i was a little disturbed kind of following by what bruce was saying there but uh, being on revite ed and talking to a lot of folks and obviously we've been batting this around for a while and Apparently it's been dealt with by prior councils as to what to do and uh, I think that we we crafted something here that I don't think is overly burdensome uh, that uh, at the same time addressed um, I guess a lot of the downtown merchants were the ones that were kind of pushing for this and I became kind of a believer after going through the process with them so I, I, would, I would second, second term. And, and I would also agree that um, due to the due diligence of our planning staff and the uh, Revite Ed and, and merchants that this is not um, a punitive ordinance. It is trying to encourage and, and in fact, help uh, address some of the vacancy issues where we can help, you know, have an information um, on all of the vacancies that are available to people that are interested and and it is not onerous um, provided people are doing their due diligence to maintain and, and offer their their properties so I, I think we've struck a, a balance in this ordinance and we'll see how it plays out uh, but I think it is a, a step forward and I appreciate the work that Dusty's done on it and, and the community so um, and was there any comment from anyone else in the public? I think I already asked that. And if not, we'll have a roll call vote. Yes. Council, no, excuse me, Councilmember Gonzalez? Yes. Stransky? Yes. Rodriguez? Yes. Mayor Stroll? Yes. Thank you. And now we are going to our City Council and Committee reports. League of California Cities. Uh, has. I think I reported at the last meeting on that. I will be attending. I'm on the Public Safety Committee and I'll be heading over to Sacramento on the 8th uh, to go be a part of that. Um, Council of Governments. Uh, did not meet. Did not meet. Okay. EDFC met the day after our last meeting, so almost two weeks ago. Um, the There's a lot of um, uh, getting the books in order and getting um, you know, all of the record keeping in order, uh, which is a major part. But the main thing that's available for the public is that they are really eager to make loans to uh, businesses that um, are worthy of, of loans from EDFC. They have they have received a um, CDFI, whatever that, Community Development Finance, Institute. Anyway, it's a federal federal loan. They've received three hundred fifty thousand dollars, which increases the amount of money they have available for loans. So, if there are any entrepreneurs out there, please um, contact EDFC. That's oh, the other um, sort of sad news is that um, Trish Steele, who's been kind of the central figure in our broadband uh, committee. Uh, countywide is retiring and uh, they're not sure whether they're going to be able to replace her with somebody who has anywhere near the same knowledge base but uh, the county is is looking to keep that moving the broadband uh, alliance is really important for our community to have good broadband 
So, um, MSWA is meeting, they did not meet in the last, in the last couple of weeks, but they're going to be meeting um, later this month on the 31st. Um, and MTA? MTA has a meeting coming up, but has not met, although uh, MTA and uh, uh, two local businesses, which I happen to own, have partnered up and are entering the trolley in the uh, parade this year. And also currently, um, I'm not sure everybody knows that Willits has an MTA called Local One, and it runs uh, from out here on Commercial Street through town uh, out to um, the casino, then goes out to the shopping center, then over to the hospital, and then back north again. And I'm surprised at the number of people I've run into that don't know that we have local service. Well, from June 22nd to July 3rd, um, instead of running the uh, short bus, they'll be running the trolley. Uh, the trolley will accept a fare. However, on the Saturday prior to the 4th of July, the fares for that day will be waived. The sponsors will be paying it, as well as any time between June 22nd and July 3rd, if you're riding the trolley. Um, if you mentioned uh, that uh, you heard about it through the Visit Willis Tourism Board, your, your fare will be waived and the sponsor will pick up the cost of, uh, of, of the ride. We're hoping to encourage people to come down to the museum, come down and do some shopping, and it could be even that you're on the north end of town and you want to go to the south end of town and do some shopping. So if you're aware of that, so we'll be doing different things to get the word out there uh, so that people are enjoying the trolley. So there's an opportunity for a free ride. And then uh, after the 4th of July parade gets over, the MTA trolley will run for two additional hours at no cost to help get people back and forth to um, all the festivities at the rodeo grounds. So pretty excited about that. MTA has been really easy to work with and creating that partnership. So wonderful, yeah. great, thank you. So go ride the trolley. Wonderful. Uh, Lafco, uh, we did hear that there's conversations going on. That there yeah, it hasn't met and meets again on June fourth. Okay, yeah. Uh, Finance Committee hasn't met, and I think at this point we're, we're going to have the budget workshop because all of the council members really need to be equally uh, involved in that rather than to try to do that in committee. Mm -hmm. so. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just on that, that uh, no Friday to Tuesday, the rest of the week. Okay. We'll get so we'll get is, it gonna, is it going to be all day? It was going to be about a 10 to 2 or 10 to 4. Um, I don't think it's going to need to be all day. I, we are revising the budget to make it a little easier to wade through. Um, so I think we we're going to try for a, for a three hour session. Three for how much? Session. A three or four hour session with the lunch in between so you can have a break and you bring in some sandwiches. And for what time? For what time? And, uh, once we get a new date, we'll, we'll let you know. Okay. Is there a date that's, is there a time that's, that you prefer? No, I just need to know so I can ask my boss so I can get off. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be calling you. Um, just looking at my calendar, the Monday the 25th, but that's only two days before council meets, so that's yeah, kind of. Yeah, the 20th? Yeah, I have no objection to the 20th. The 20th? I, I have an appointment, but I'll see What day is the 20th? Wednesday. Wednesday? Wednesday. Well, what about the Monday? What's from the past that she only has two days to prepare? Yeah, that's kind of tough. That's, we, we, can, we won't be able to. Okay, well, if it's the 20th, then I will try to reschedule my two things. Okay. All righty. Um, okay. So we'll try, we'll try for the 20th. And, we're, and what, what time frames are best for y'all? I'll clear my schedule the rest of the week, whatever whatever you need, we'll all rearrange. Okay. I just as soon start a little earlier so that we get the okay. afternoon. Excellent. Like 9, 30 or so. I don't know. Okay. okay, that sounds fine. Anybody? Give your druthers to Stephanie so she can schedule it. Okay, um, moving on. That was finance. Waste and uh, water and wastewater. Did they met? No. No, didn't think so. Um, revive Ed. 
Um, we haven't met since last. We're trying to coordinate a, uh, a sign committee or sign uh, subcommittee. And it looks like the 14th seems to be running in the lead. Any particular time? That's uh, no. The 14th is run out, and I thought I, I could schedule around it, yeah. I'll get with Heather and see what – she kind of left it open, but I'll confirm with that, then I'll send it out. Okay. Okay. The ad hoc committees, Caltrans uh, has not met since the previous meeting of the city council. Um, the fire JPA, I don't believe we've not met. Not met. Um, and uh, we did have a mobile home park meeting, and um, I sat in on Jerry's behalf and let you do the report on Sure. That. We we met with the tenants and the property owners. The um, the conversation that took place is confidential. Um, between the two of them, we wanted a safe place where they could communicate. I felt like we made progress and uh, parties we were able to discuss some issues that were important to them. Um, I received an email just today from uh, one of the tenant group's uh, representatives, Cheryl Abney, uh, with a question about the date that it was going to be on our agenda. Uh, she thought it was going to be June 20th and was told by the city that no, it's the 27th. She wanted to know why we changed it. I explained to her that we didn't change it. Our meetings are always on this, the second and fourth Wednesday of the month. Um, she's still asking that the ordinance come, if the potential ordinance comes before the council on that date. However, the meeting did seem to go well. Uh, there's nothing more to report on that. If and given that we're probably not going to have another ad hoc committee, we will not. And um, and whatever resolutions or information that was exchanged there is probably um, all that's going to happen until the council comes and comes back. We could do it the second Wednesday instead of the fourth Wednesday if that is the desire of the. Well, I don't think that would still accommodate them. They were that they were they thought it was the twentieth. As long as they know for sure what the date is, and I, I just relayed to her today that the no, it's, it's the fourth Wednesday okay. of the month. We'll That's what we that. had set before. Okay. And the reason we're not having another ad hoc meeting is because both parties agreed that they didn't need another meeting. Okay. All right. So we'll stick with the twenty seventh. That will come before us formally again. Um, the JPA on the wastewater treatment facility has not happened, and you're still. Oh, I um, I received word from the district's attorney as to the name of the auditor that they would like to participate in that process. I forwarded that to our auditor, and he told me he would reach out to her, and they're going to work together to hopefully select the auditor who will jointly be engaged by the parties. So okay, so things are moving. They are moving. That's good to hear. Um, other boards and committees, the Museum Advisory Board. Museum Advisory Board has not met, and the reason we haven't met is we're still waiting for the, the promised information from the Board of Supervisors about the new cultural agency. And thus far, Board of Supervisors haven't provided us with anything. We expected to get that information weeks ago, and we've not yet received it. Um, so hopefully at our next board meeting, I'll have something to report. Although there's a new exhibit, um, a new exhibit at the museum, if you haven't seen it yet, uh, please stop by and take a look. I personally haven't uh, seen the exhibit, but I've heard wonderful things about it. So, yeah, good. I'll go check it out and give you more information. Uh, and the visit to the Casino Tourism Board. Um, nothing has changed since we last uh, met, except that um, I'm excited tomorrow, Mendocino County Arts Council, uh, I had mentioned before that they were donating to the Visit Willits Tourism Board a, a large um, a large work of art called The Conductor that was previously um, at the Botanical Gardens in Fort Bragg and also in Ukiah. And tomorrow I'm taking my pickup and we're picking it up and bringing it here and then we'll just be looking for a place to place it, whether we work with the city and put it on city property or or private property, I, I don't know yet, but um, very, very pleased that uh, that was an opportunity that came our way. And we'll be looking for more opportunities to, to, to put other uh, pieces of art and sculpture in our community. Great. Okay, um, we are now moving to 
council member reports and recommendations and or good and welfare. I think we can do that all wrapped up in one item. If anyone has any items. I all do. <laughs> okay, I know I can too. I just want to know if anybody has discovered where 142.5 is. <laughs> um, you know, I reached out to the uh, senator, senator or uh, assemblyman's office. He still has not gotten back to me. McGuire, McGuire, had, McGuire's office was supposed to get back to me on that. <laughs> I'll, I'll follow up again. Could you check on that? I will. Because that keeps me up at night. I, <laughs> I hear you. And it's part of the trail. Thing oh, okay. <laughs> I sort of think that's what it was. Okay. Um, Jerry, did you have anything? Yeah, I just wanted to remind everybody uh, the invite's still there from the Kids Club that on the 25th, I believe it starts about 3.30 or so. Uh, yeah. They're having their carnival over at Beckel. And also the car shows this weekend. And so uh, everybody come on out and support the car show. I think the Lions do a breakfast, I believe, on Sunday morning. So if you want to have breakfast, go support the Lions. So I will be there. Okay, and you said you had some? Yeah, uh, three things. On June 2nd from 1 to 4 at the Little Lake Grange, Nuestra Alianza um, is doing a benefit to, to help uh, increase uh, multicultural awareness and also help raise some funds for their program that has seen some recent cuts. And they'll have uh, uh, lots of activities for the family, uh, dancing, music, and tortilla making. So for those who might be looking for something fun to do on June 2nd from 1 to 4, mark your calendar. And then also I want to say that uh, the hospital put on a beautiful 90th birthday presentation. I saw, I know many of us were there and uh, just want to show our gratitude for how much we appreciate having a hospital of that caliber in our community. And then lastly, I've heard uh, a lot of scuttlebutt about how highly paid we council members are. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> and so I thought it, would, it might be important that we go on record about our high wages. So, uh, just throwing it out to the community, we make $100 a month stipend, but our mayor makes $200 a month, <laughs> and we receive, we receive health benefits. So just wanted to make it very clear that uh, it's not a highly paid job. We put in anywhere from 10 to 20 hours a week. We all serve on multiple committees outside of just seeing us here two times a week. We meet with community members. Uh, sometimes it's more than 20 hours a week. Um, just with all the reading material we get and meeting with the community. I'm uh, grateful to be in this position. I love it. Uh, I appreciate it. And, uh, Sabrina, but it's I, not a high paid job. Can, can I add something? That we also yes. attend a lot of meetings, not all in Willits, some of them. Yes. My, my trip to Sacramento is going to be on my dime. And my trips to Ukiah for those meetings, again, that's, I, I don't get uh, reimbursed. We don't get a that. mileage reimbursement. We don't get a lodging reimbursement. And we travel on a regular basis every month to meetings outside of the city of Willis. And I just think it's important for the community to, to understand that. And on the other hand, there's great psychic benefits to being a, a decision maker and a you know, <laughs> volunteer in the community. And uh, so I hope that anyone out there who's interested in being on city council doesn't get discouraged by that because the uh, you can do this work on your own time and other than the meetings that you can kind of have to attend. So um, it, it's great rewards to being public service. And that's what we are, we're public servants. So I have one more thing. Oh, okay. Stephanie just reminded me that I brought it up. Uh, last year for our float for the 4th of mm -hmm. July for city council, we were sitting on the back of a pickup and we had just a few flags and I had expressed an interest that in the spirit of frontier days that I would love to see the council do something a little bit more to be excited about the frontier festivities and wanted to invite the rest of you to see what we might come up with. I don't know if you want to agendize it for another meeting. We have time. I'm willing to spearhead it. I won't do it all. <laughs> but I do think that we should show a little bit more excitement, patriotism, creativity, than, creativity <laughs> than just sitting there with a flag. Because, yeah, yeah. Any thoughts? Bring them to the next meeting. Yeah.
<laughs> yeah, I hope we don't have to ride horses. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I just maybe about 20 years ago I might have been doing that. But okay. Uh, I also wanted to mention the the 90th birthday for the hospital it was a really well planned and and heartfelt um, group. You know, and a lot of people were there, and it was just very very well done. And we are so grateful to have that that high quality. Oh, and you forgot to mention the lions they debuted. Ah, the, yes. The lions. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the, the two lions at the entry. Um, that, yeah, it's very nice, and it represents the strength and the heart. Of the Frank and Howard. And Frank, Frank and, and Howard. Howard. Really? Right. Yeah. And then I, I just also want to announce um, that on June 9th, um, Well, Willis Economic Localization is sponsoring a tour of our Little Lake Valley mitigation lands, which is a lot of acres out here, uh, and they're very beautiful. They're very rich uh, in um, habitat and uh, some wonderful flowers and birds and all that stuff. And uh, Maricela de Santa Ana is the kind of public uh, relations person and a biologist working for the Resource Conservation District. She will be leading that tour, and if you're interested in coming on it, um, you should RSVP to me, or you can just show up at 9.15. It's um, going to be the tour from 9.30 to 12.30, and then a potluck lunch, and we'll be hearing from several other um, experts in different aspects of the mitigation lands uh, over the lunch, um, kind of having presentations from several other community people. So um, with that, if there's no other... I, I, I just want to clarify, I heard a one person ask for maybe it be agendized about the float. I need two more and then I'll put it on the agenda and you guys can talk about what you want to do on your float. I'm okay with it on the agenda. I have no bright ideas at the moment. But yeah, I kind of the same way. I don't... You know. We've got two weeks to, to come up with ideas. You know, if it's on the agenda, maybe someone from the public will or come maybe up I, and propose some. So, I'll, I, so I will put it on the agenda. Sure, why not? Okay. Okay. Uh, and we do not have a, um, a closed session item tonight, so I believe I am ready to call this meeting adjourned at 8.50.